If you've ever been mountain biking, you know that feeling of flying down the trail using your own power, navigating through windy trails around trees, over rocks, boulders, roots. It's an exhilarating sport. So really, is there anything bad about mountain biking? Well, of course there is, and that's exactly why I'm here talking about it today. Some people get so good at mountain biking, it's like the bike becomes an extension of them until it isn't. So this story isn't for the faint of heart. If you have any general queasiness about, oh, things like wounds, talk of blood, injuries, and even a little thing called impalement, you might want to skip this story. Your discretion is advised as I talk about some pretty nasty injuries here. Peter Agricola was a 43-year-old husband and father of three, and he was super active. He loved the outdoors, and he tried to spend as much time as he could outside. He was a skier and a mountain biker who rode his bike about four times a week. He actually started mountain biking at about age 22 after college and it soon became a passion of his. As he grew older, he got married and started a family. He continued to mountain bike because he just loved it so much. Some might even say he was a little bit obsessed with it. And on one regular old Sunday morning, Peter was stoked to get out on the trails again. It was a really challenging track through dense trees at a local state forest. Peter got to the trailhead and geared up with his helmet, his clip-on shoes, and he hopped on his bike and headed down the trail. It was beautiful, it was a sunny day, and he was so happy to be out there once again. He was riding pretty fast because this is what he did normally on this particular trail because he'd been on it so many times. He was having a great time when he came flying down this big hill. It was a really rocky section with some boulders that he had to jump over and kind of like a drainage ditch type trench at the bottom where the water ran through. Now the water is normally about 12 inches in this trench, but they had a lot of rain recently so it ended up being a lot deeper, almost double than what it normally was. So as he flew down this super steep hill going super fast, he realized at the last second that the water was way deeper than he expected and he had no time to react. Before he knew it, his front wheel got jammed in that trench and just sent Peter flying over the handlebars. He was trying really hard to save himself from catapulting over because on the other side, at a glimpse, he saw some big, huge rocks and just imagine how painful those would be to land on. But a little thing called inertia won and he went flying over the handlebars. He now looks back and compares it to kind of Superman flying through the air. He was catapulting, his arms were in the air in front of him but unlike Superman, Peter had absolutely no control over where he was going. He flew off the bike and went about 12 feet right onto a downed log. He missed the rocks that he was worried about, but as he landed and he caught his breath, he knew that something wasn't right. Peter landed on a log that had a 5-inch branch sticking out of it. And it didn't just graze him, the branch went right into Peter's chest as he landed on the log. Initially, he didn't know what happened other than he was in pain and he got the wind knocked out of him. And he thought maybe he broke his shoulder because he was, you know, that's where he was feeling pain and he was a bit confused. He just didn't know what was going on. Peter sat up trying to catch his breath when he looked down and saw this huge red spot growing on his white t-shirt. It was about the size of his hand and it was growing quickly. At this point, Peter was starting to struggle to breathe. But he knew where he was and he knew the way out so he just had to get there <laughs> luckily he had his phone but oddly enough his first reaction was actually to call his wife instead of 911. even with the way he was struggling to breathe he didn't really think the injury was that bad so he broke the news to his wife that he had a bad accident and that he landed on a tree and needed help obviously she kind of freaked out it was 8 30 in the morning and her husband was calling her to say that he needs help on the trail out in the woods and she kind of lost it. But she ended up calling 911 and getting the ambulance, giving them directions to get to him. So they finally met the ambulance on the road and they put Peter in and they zoomed off to the hospital. What was a bummer was that in the ambulance, they couldn't give him any pain medication because his blood pressure was all over the place and they were concerned about him going into cardiac arrest. So the 30 minute ride to the hospital felt like an eternity as he was in excruciating pain. When Peter got to the hospital, his wife showed up shortly after and he thought, oh, things will be okay. I'm in the hospital now. I'm going to be taken care of. I'll be back mountain biking on Tuesday. I find it really funny that that was one of the first things that he thought of was in the hospital was when he could get back on his bike. 
but little did Peter know that he would not be back mountain biking on Tuesday. A CT scan later showed that he had a tremendous amount of blood pooling in his lungs and in his chest. And then the situation became very serious. They had to immediately put a chest tube in him. So the doctors told his wife to leave the room because this wasn't going to be a pleasant process. So they actually had to strap Peter's arms down and his legs. Three nurses and two doctors held him to the bed while they put this chest tube in. And just before it happened, the nurse told him that this is going to be the most painful thing you'll ever go through. I don't know about you, but I'm not sure I'd want that little tidbit of information right then. So as they were trying to get that chest tube in, Peter kept yelling them to stop as he fought them and as they were trying to put it in. Remember, he's still not on any pain medication, so this must have been brutal to go through. But they finally got the chest tube in and then strapped him from the table. And then he was finally able to get that sweet relief of painkillers. Oh, yeah. Peter's wife came back in the room and Peter still didn't quite understand the extent of his injuries. It was pretty serious. But he was thinking, okay, so now things are good. They figured out this blood thing, you know, the blood leaking into my lungs and my chest. Um, we got that all figured out. I should be good, you know, stitched up in a couple days and I should be back on my bike in no time. You have to give Peter credit. He's incredibly optimistic when it comes to getting back on that mountain bike. But that night he went to the bathroom and saw blood all over the floor. Peter didn't think it was a big deal, so we just went back to bed. But hours later, when the nurses came in, they were shocked by what they saw. They knew that this was serious and that he shouldn't be bleeding like that because the blood should have been stopped by that chest tube. So they immediately summoned for help. The next thing Peter knew, he was surrounded by eight doctors who were all saying that he needed surgery now. Peter was still in denial about his injuries, though, even with eight doctors telling him that it was serious. And he said he disagreed with them and said, I don't need surgery. I need to go mount I'm going to go mountain biking later in the week. What are you talking about? But luckily, the doctors didn't listen to him. They knew that something was terribly wrong and they had to figure it out fast. Now, Peter was starting to panic again. And he with the seriousness of all the doctors, he maybe stopped thinking about mountain biking for five minutes. But he did have two seriously and potentially life threatening injuries. He had a pneumothorax, which was air leaking from the lungs and into your chest cavity, and then a hemothorax, which was blood pooling into the chest. During surgery, they found the source of the bleeding. He had perforated his pulmonary vein, which was spewing blood into his chest. So they repaired that and realized that his lung was also punctured by the branch. So this combination was really bad because most people don't survive both of these injuries together. So Peter also had all these other injuries. He had five top ribs that were broken in half and displaced. They were bent inwards and broken in 21 places. He broke three lower ribs as well. And he also perforated his pericardia, which is the sac that surrounds the heart. The doctor later told him that if it went in a half a centimeter more, it would have perforated his heart and he would have died right on the trail. So Peter was super lucky. He was in the hospital for about 10 days and was super excited to get back out and reunite with his bike. Just kidding, probably his kids. And much to Peter's horror, it was months before he got back on his beloved mountain bike, but he was actually able to get back on the indoor bike trainer in a little over four weeks after the incident, which is amazing. But a week after that, he was riding his road bike outdoors actually, just on short rides, but still getting outside. And I laugh at Peter's obsession with the mountain bike, but he actually points out that it was a huge help psychologically. About four months later, he was able to get back on his favorite mountain biking trails. He went slow on non-technical tracks, but he was back and it was a huge milestone in his recovery, mentally and physically. So like a lot of us, Peter realized after the incident that he needed to kind of change how th he was doing things as he moved forward. He just couldn't take those risks anymore. Many of us learn from these mistakes and try to change things to kind of minimize future mistakes. Peter never rode alone after the accident and he still has trouble with really technical downhills to this day. He's much more careful now and doesn't ever want to go over those handlebars again and I can't blame him. So Peter feels lucky to be alive after that ordeal and he's thankful to friends and family and everybody who helped him out. It really helped him get through it. So that was a wild one and a scary accident, but one with a happy ending in that Peter came out okay. So let me know if you've ever impaled yourself. <laughs> 
I've never really had any impalements, I don't think. I have to think about it. I think just nails when I was a kid, stepping on nails outside, but that's about it. Or if you had or witnessed a mountain biking accident you want to share, let me know in the comments below. I have a funny story about a mountain biking accident that I heard about while I was in the hospital one day. I was cutting up some meat with a hatchet and hatcheted my finger. <laughs> it was okay, I just had to make sure I didn't break anything. And luckily the axe was dull, so no major cuts. But I was in getting x-rays and the x-ray technician was from outside of the territory. And I live in the Yukon Territory, Northern Canada. It's quite a wild place. Lots of activities here. People are always out mountain biking and doing outdoor adventures. And the x-ray technician said, wow, we really see a lot of crazy injuries here. Like you guys are really hurting yourselves in weird ways. <laughs> and he went on to tell me about one where a guy was mountain biking down a hill and had a chainsaw on his back, but had an accident and went flying. And I guess the chainsaw ended up cutting him really badly. <laughs> and uh, he, was quite, he was quite hurt. Pretty sure that the chainsaw wasn't running. I'm not sure why the guy was riding with the chainsaw. I didn't get that backstory, but an interesting story nonetheless. Anyways, that's the story of Peter Agricola. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you at the next adventure.